Okay, Speed City fans, I am delighted to welcome to the show an American finally on the world stage. In fact, we've got two. Uh, I know him very well because I've been following his career, but he may be new to some of our audience, but he's certainly making some waves. His name is Joe Roberts, and he's racing in Moto2 along with um, Superbike American champion uh, Cameron Bobier. So we have two uh, Americans fighting at, at the world level. Um, but Joe's been to Europe before and um, had been back to, to the States and then now back onto the world stage, um, as he has been for a couple of years. So, Joe, welcome to Speed City again. But more importantly, congratulations on a great result at uh, Portugal, which could have been even better. But uh, let's start with that just at the end of the race, because it was so, uh, well, it was so exciting. Tell us, tell us about those last couple of laps. Oh, man, yeah, it was, um, it was a crazy crazy race i think some yes obviously like i've watched it back and realized that it was so cool all the path the past is going on the, the people everything so it was a cool race to be a part of um and lucky to lead the laps i did um and it was yeah a little crazy on those last laps man i i was trying to kind of find my way to get up into second because Raul had made a little bit of a gap and I knew I wasn't going to be able to catch him, but I thought second was still possible. And um, yeah, I lined up a pass that I was kind of thinking about a, a few laps earlier on Kinnett place. I was really strong and uh, went up the inside there and uh, yeah, I screwed up the next corner. I went a little bit wide and let Kinnett kind of get up underneath us and, and kind of push us both wide, which allowed Remy to just kind of squeeze in there and, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of torn. I didn't know if I should try to, you know, wind it up to get a good drive to pass Kinnett on the last corner or, or just hug the, cor the corner like crazy so Remy wouldn't go there. I was convinced he wasn't going to pass me. And then I felt a, I felt a, a, a tire right on my shoulder, uh, which was a little bit surprising. I thought we were going to crash. But, so that was uh, Remy, was it? That was Remy that uh, caused you to have half a tire on your shoulder that when you got off the bike. Yeah, have half half the compound all over my uh, <laughs> all over my arm. But oh, it was a cool race, man. And uh, yeah, it was. It's it's racing like that that makes me smile. That we can be close like that, and uh, can tell you, I'll definitely repay the the favor to Remy the next race out. <laughs> Well, it's interesting that it was Remy because you, both you and he uh, sort of arrived on the world scene at the same time uh, and you were sort of battling with each other further down the field in, in on different bikes last year. But now you've moved up. So can you kind of explain, well, why don't you give us a little pot of history, first of all, for our audience who may not know your, your rise? Um, let's start with how you got into this whole scene uh, and then we'll end up with, with, with um, how you got onto this bike this year. Yeah, I've been racing the World Championship now. I think it's like my first, my fourth full season. Um, second season on the Calyx, which is considered to be like the, the top bike in the in the class. It's what the, the bike that everyone wins on every year because we have just bikes that, uh, chassis, the engines are all the same, but the, the chassis are what different, is what is what is different. Um, so yeah, kind of two learning years to understand the class. And then last year we put it, solid season together podium pole positions and I'm seventh in the championship so um yeah and, and it, it says it, here you're six equal with Kanet. right yeah currently now i'm, I'm equal with Kanet in the championship but last year i finished seventh and yeah it was a solid season man and i uh i ended up getting offered a ride for the Italian trans racing team which they they won the championship last year so um it's kind of an opportunity that i couldn't say no to it was uh, a lot of really experienced people my uh, my chief technician is a guy named Giovanni Sandy he's like a legendary um a legendary crew chief you would know him for sure from your yeah. world superbike days and, definitely and so uh won won titles with Max Biaggi with yeah. uh lots of riders Jorge Lorenzo he won titles with so to get a chance to work with somebody like that who I think has you know had so many titles to his name i feel like he's doing something right and um yeah it's 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 an interesting year it's kind of teaching me a lot of things about not so much to reach reach too much for wins or reach too much for championships because you know when i came into this championship this year it was like win the title win win every race type mentality and, and it's kind of their their mentality is just like hey session by session where we're, we're working 
every session that's that's the that's the job is to be the best in that current session and work towards the race don't think about the result and um it's kind of creating a bit more of a calmness and more of a fun environment and, and something i think that will take me further in my career you know to keep this thing fun and and i mean it's crazy what we do man we're in a crazy time in the world and yeah. <laughs> racing our, racing motorcycles and battling each other out and living the dream so it's nice to appreciate it how hard has that been i mean uh, we talk to a lot of athletes and a lot of motor racing people but uh, uh i've been traveling during the pandemic obviously here in the united states but that's nothing compared to you you i believe you're living in portugal and obviously you've got to go to all the races um how tough has it been yeah i think last year was more tough than this year to be totally honest with you um you know Last year, we had a kind of a condensed championship where we were racing. We had three races in, in three weeks sometimes and back-to-back and -back rounds at the same track, which I hate. I don't like doing that because, you know, I like to put my energy into a, a circuit and then that's it, move on to the next one. I, I don't like doing back-to-backs like that. I just get burnt out on the track. So um, that, was, that was really hard. And, uh, I mean – yeah, I guess you kind of live in this sort of fear and this type of thing that, you know, if you got this thing, maybe you'd miss races or whatever, or other things would happen. And I think now I've kind of this year learned a lot about just creating calmness and not really worrying too much about it because a lot of things are out of your control. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes you can do all you can do and that's it. So yeah, it's often, often a mantra I hear a lot of sportsmen say, which is concentrate on what you can tr control. Um, yeah. And, and, and you'll, you, you know, you'll be better for it because your focus is there. If you start worrying about all the things you can't control, then you'll never get anywhere. Exactly, man. I'm trying to, I'm looking at the big picture. Now, you've got the Red Bull gear, uh, and obviously you've got a championship-winning team behind you. You mentioned Sandy. These are all good things. But I met you, probably the first time I met you was at Cota when you were, were a Red Bull rookie at the time, I think just 15. Um, so you've managed to, to stick with Red Bull, and they've stuck with you. How important is that? Yeah, it's pretty amazing to be with Red Bull. Um, it's been a dream of mine to be like a Red Bull athlete and, you know, wear the hat and everything. And more than that, I think it's just such a cool company, what they do for their athletes. Um, but one thing that they've helped me a lot with is, is the mental side of things. They have the, the Red Bull um, Athletes Performance Center. And I was training there in Santa Monica like every, every day almost. Um, and what is different about their training necessarily versus what you've done before or where, wherever, wherever else you've trained? Um, a lot of, a lot more structure, I would say this okay. year, um, and working with really top, top professionals that are hired for this, you know, at Red Bull doesn't spare any expense, you know, so, um, working with top performance mental coaches that help me a lot, a lot with certain exercises, things that I can do, you know, on a week, on a race weekend, which has been pretty useful, I think in times that maybe you're not, things aren't going exactly how you thought they would, but, um, yeah. And just the gym stuff and everything. It's always, it's all good. It's always good. And, and they're kind of, they're still helping me too. You know, I'm a phone call away from a program and they send me stuff to do out here. So in Portugal. Often we talk about international racing as being tough and, you know, MotoGP especially is very Spanish orientated uh, and a lot of foreigners, wherever they come from, Japan, America, whatever, struggle a little bit because the cultures are different, um, you know, and, it, and if you don't speak the language straight off the bat, that's hard too if you're in Italy. But uh, I know your history has given you a really good basis uh, to be based in Europe now because you've been there already. You've been there, done that uh, when you were younger. So are you finding this sort of living in Europe now a lot easier when you're at the world level? Yeah, I don't know. I, I always thought, I always thought before when I was younger, Oh, I've got, I've been in Europe before and everything, but honestly, I, I did find the last few years to be hard. Um, especially last year, I was jumping around to, to different, different Airbnbs and different places, always moving, living out of a suitcase, which I'm still kind of doing, but um, I found more of a base now I think this is the first year I've actually felt really solid in the place I'm living. I'm living in the south of Portugal by the beach and with a good group of people that um, I'm actually living with people before yeah. I used to just live alone. And I got pretty lonely, to be honest with you. It was yeah. uh, not an easy time. Uh, so are you are you near the Portimao circuit then? That would have been your home race last week. Yeah, I'm like 20 minutes from the circuit, actually. 
Yeah. Um, so it was like my home race. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah, a nice part of the world. I've been there, and I, I remember the circuit opening when it was first, um, you know, when it was first uh, c- coming onto the world scene. For, and World Superbikes was the first event there, actually. Uh, and of course, we've got Formula One. I'm going to ask you about that later in a minute, um, next week. So. Okay, talk about the season ahead because clearly you are in a great position now to really go for it. How serious are you thinking about championships, or are you more a case of thinking about, like you say, what you can control and what and 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 just going forward um, with your own progress? Yeah, I think at the beginning of the season, I thought a lot about the championship where I could be, but I just found it really distracting to think about the championship all the time. So right now, it's just race by race. I think the team the way they operated it last year when they were in, you know, obviously they won the championship was we didn't think about the championship till Port of the last race of the year. So <laughs> I think it's really all you can do. The goal every weekend is to do the best you can do and, and to r- win races. So wherever that puts you. And obviously I think keep in mind the, the, the facts that the championship doesn't matter. Points do matter. So, you know, if you can't, if you can't get a podium, settle for fourth, settle for fifth. Yeah. You know, or, you know, just do the smart thing. And, and yeah, I think that's the, the, the thing I'll keep going with. <laughs> and how do you feel about the, the package you've got? You mentioned uh, your engineer, Sandy. Uh, what about, I mean, is there anything mi- missing from the package? I mean, you're up there at the sharp end, so I'm guessing not. But what are you working on specifically now for the races ahead? I think the only thing missing still is just that process of getting to know each other, um, yeah. which always takes time um you find you find what works a couple races in and i mean we haven't really had to be totally honest we haven't really had that much preseason testing i had one day in jerez last year at the end of the year and then two days in portimao and then we we're straight to well and then the test in in qatar as well we had three days there and then we we're straight into racing so it's not it's not like a ton of time to really get used to each other and the races they happen like that you know yeah. you're the Friday's finished you're already into qualifying day and then it's racing so I think with time we'll get to know each other more and this last weekend in Portimao was really important for each other to to get to cho- get to know each other more in my style my way of riding and things and also me working I'm I'm open to a lot of things man I'm a I like to take in information I like to push away the the things that are bullshit and <laughs> taking the stuff that's good you know so um right now i'm getting a lot of good stuff so i'm I'm soaking it in and in that respect i mean i love the fact that moto gp has you know each weekend all three championships are together so and and you know you know you are kind of in your own world but you are now you know around the very best in the world do you watch closely to moto gp and and still moto three uh, and who do you hang out with if anybody do you, who do you kind of maybe get, get sponge some information off or who are you friends with um well, I do. Wa- obviously, I watch all the racing. I watch Moto Three and some crazy cool stuff going on in Moto Three right now. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to be involved in that. <laughs> no, man, I've never wanted to race that class. I'm so glad I didn't. Although Moto Two last race was getting not too far away from that, but um, Moto GP is a bit all over the place, kind of hard to predict. Yep. Uh, which is, in my opinion, is is good, but also bad. You know, like I like I liked growing up with the heroes. You know, the guys you always you always could count on to, to win and you had your favorite. So I guess I come from that time, but it is cool to see how many manufacturers can kind of put it up there now. It's so who were your different. heroes then? Who were your heroes growing up? Um, I think my, the rider I wanted to ride most like was Casey Stoner. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone I always, yeah, was my favorite, favorite rider. Um, as far as like the riders that inspired me the most, I would say Nikki. Nikki sure. was definitely the one. I mean, um, and yeah, I think Rossi as well. But Rossi, I think <laughs> I don't want to say Rossi because everyone says Rossi. But yeah, yeah. have but you met him? Was, yeah, I've met Rossi. I went out to his. Uh, I raced his like 100 kilometer race at his ranch last year or two years ago. Um, that was pretty sweet. Pretty cool cap. Okay. Well. Coming up, of course, is one of Rossi's uh, great tracks and one of MotoGP's great tracks. And, of course, it's um, Jerez. You mentioned that you've done a test there. How much are you looking forward to racing, um, you know, on a competitive bike at a circuit that really is, I think, uh, the biggest challenge and probably the most interesting race 
weekend of the year. Yeah, Jerez is one of those tracks that is 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 like one of the hardest races to to go to because so many riders are so fast there. So you really have to be on your game there. Um, I've I've had like mixed things there. I've had really good tests where I've been super fast, and then I've also done really shit sometimes. <laughs> uh, last year, my the two races. Yeah, Mark yeah, Marquez but- can talk about that. So don't worry, you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, but at least yeah, exactly. But. Last year, I had two really terrible races there, so I'd like I'd like to to change that fate, you know, change the past and and have a really solid weekend. Um, I think we'll get different weather for sure. It'll be a lot cooler this year, so um, I am looking forward to it. The last time I went to Hareth, I had a really positive test was was quite fast, so um, I'm def- I'm looking forward to it. I think every weekend, man, I think we have a chance. And that's something that um, I'm taking into every racetrack that maybe I didn't quite get that thing there. I'm starting to try to find the love for everywhere, you know, and, and see what we could find. Well, obviously, as you know, American fans, uh, they love their winners and they want to see you winning. Um, I mean, you really are on the edge of uh, of that. Uh, is there a particular circuit that you're looking forward to that you start to think to yourself, I know this place and I'm dialed in there and I've got my best hope there? Or is it, does it matter? Yeah, last year I picked a, I picked three tracks. Well, what was the three tracks? I picked three tracks last year that were my, my top picks for my best results of the year, which... Maybe I'm not trying to do so much this year. Like I said before, I'm trying to just love everywhere. But um, I said Barcelona, Le Mans, and Brno. Uh, we're not going to Brno anymore. So well, Barcelona um, and Le Mans are coming up. So yes, yeah, so Le Mans, man, is Le Mans. Last year was one of those places I I kind of got into some sort of like <laughs> I don't know some sort of what's the word I'm looking for like a trance. I was like stuck in it. I was saying every day I was like a mantra, like I'm going to pull, pull, win, pull, win. I got the pole and then we had some technical problems and I started in the last corner. So, um, but I still got six there and that track man has always been a place that just came so natural to me. I felt like I found the flow. There's some places as a rider, you just show up and you're, you find the flow right away. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of special when you find that, um, it's, it's really nice, honestly. Port de Mal is one of those circuits that I, it's a really hard circuit to ride, but I found the flow pretty quickly. So um, I'm looking forward to Le Mans for sure. I think I got I got high expectations for Le Mans. <laughs> yeah, and that's a tough circuit too, the Bugatti, the Bugatti circuit. It's, um, it's not easy, um, and it too has a lot of undulations. But I want to go back to Port de Mal. We've got our – this is going to be a first – I'm going to get a MotoGP guy to tell me about Formula One because Formula One is going to Portimao, uh, their next race. Tell us and tell the fans uh, of Formula One what is so special about Portimao because the bottom line is you are pretty much going at the same speeds. It doesn't matter whether you're on two wheels or four wheels. Of course, it's different. But what is it about Portimao that makes it uh, such a challenge? To be honest, man, you're asking maybe the worst person about Formula One because I don't, I don't think I've ever actually watched one single race full. I find it quite boring. Um, amazing to see it in person, but to watch it on on TV, um, and maybe some maybe car fans, your car fans are going to be like this asshole moto motorcycle racer. But um, I, I don't know. I just I don't no. Get by, that by, by the way, the Formula One fans watch you guys, and they all say you guys are the real deal. So yeah, you've oh, got yeah. it the right way around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't want to be, yeah, all right, fine. I, I do think- But no, Formula tell me about the cool. circuit. What is, I mean, because some people won't have ever seen it um, in terms of, you know, it's a fairly new circuit to, to Formula One. Uh, but what is it about that circuit that's so challenging? I know because I've been there, but why, you know, you just raced it, so. Well, the, the cha- most challenging thing about Port of Mao is the, is the drop-offs, the, yeah. the kind of the, the corners and the rises you can't see over. That is the hardest point, is being able to pick a spot and you know- with your speed and your braking marker, where you're going to end up once you get over that rise. Um, that's the hardest part about, about Port of Mao is just, yeah, all the ups and downs. Um, but I don't know for formula one, I don't think it's really an issue, man. <laughs> Those guys, I mean, they just keep it flat open, right. Over with all the downforce over yep. the hills. It's, it's not even like a thing. I don't think for them, we, we got to, I mean, I got to put my weight all the way over the front. I got to manage the rear brake to keep the front wheel down. And 
I got to be really soft with the handlebars over the last corner. But I think in the last corner, they just keep it flat. It's an upside down but, wing. It's easy. Yeah. I, just, I don't know, man. doesn't seem a lot to it. <laughs> <laughs> I love your style. Hey, listen, um, as I mentioned, we've got two Americans. Cameron Bobier, effectively, I'm right in saying, took over your ride from last year. Uh, have you had time to talk to him? And how's he getting on? Obviously, he got a pleasing result. Um, but he's, you know, he's sort of learning it. He's, he's, he's where you were a couple of years ago. So uh, what can you tell us about Cameron's progress? Yeah, no, I've spoken to Cameron a um, pretty decent amount, actually. And, man, he's impressing me, honestly. He's not too far away. I think he got top 10 last race. And, yeah, he's doing really well. I mean, I, I said last when I heard he was coming, I was like, yeah, Cam's going to do great. I think I've always thought Cam was one of the, the best riders from America. So I'm stoked that Americans have two two riders to cheer for. And be sick if we could get a battle going up at the front and have some – Americans on the top step, you know, on the podium, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, I think, I think he's doing a great job and, and talking to him. I think the biggest thing is just the, the difference between the super bike and the motor two is the motor two is such a rigid chassis. It's, it's so stiff, you know, like it's not like a super bike where everything kind of soft, you break and you, you feel a lot of movement on these things. It's just like stuck, you know, and, I think it takes a getting used to is the, the feeling with the front and the rear. And luckily the tires are quite similar, both Dunlops, but uh, I think that's probably why he's adjusted so well. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think he's doing well and I'm curious to see how he'll do throughout the season and if he can progress through to the front. Um, I mean, taking that step, I could tell you to get to be a front runner is not easy. It takes a lot of, uh, yeah, some time to understand it, but, yeah, I think you can get there for sure. One of the things I've heard before is um, the difference between a national level racing and international level is that the guys that you're up against, it doesn't matter whether it's Moto3, Moto2 or, or MotoGP, is right from the get-go, right from free practice one, these guys are nine-tenths, nine if not ten-tenths, and they're on it right from the first session. Yeah, and I think that's something Cameron even said to me. He's like, man, I don't understand how you guys are are so fast right from the first lap. And that's something that I, I figured out from Moto2 right away with this, the, the, how quick these guys get up to speed in the first, uh, in the first session. And yeah, it's just an understanding of your bike and, and experience on your bike and, and the track. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the world level, man. I mean, yep. <laughs> these guys aren't messing around and, and uh, you got to be on your game for sure. Is there an aspect you're trying to work on for the fans that, you know, you're trying to deal with or whether it be, I don't know, rear, rear end grip or front end feel, you know, there's always something. What, what is there a particular part of the package you want to improve on? Yeah. To win races. <laughs> <laughs> but so you're comfortable then in terms of setup. Yeah. I mean, I think with our bike, the way we have it set up, it's, it's different than last season. Um, Giovanni is a, a bit of a Italian guru. He figures he has this kind of way. So there's some things I got to figure out, but I think his setting is statistically and, and known in the past to be a good race setting. Um, so I don't really, to be honest, like last year I got three pole positions. I don't really care if I even get one pole position this year. I just care if I get wins and podiums. So um, for me, it's just working on getting comfortable with race pace and, and how to, maybe 10 laps in kind of pull the pin and pull away and take the most out of a, a, a good tire. Um, something I need to get used to. Um, but we have the potential and the bike has the potential to, to do great things, man. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good season, but yeah, like I said, go ahead. No, no, just like I said, just step by step, man, each, each session, each, each practice, uh, each race is, is a new learning experience and, and just keep working, you know? And what are your hopes for Hareth? Can we get that podium? Man, I hope so. Why not? I was so close this weekend. Why can't we get it there? <laughs> I agree. Last but not least, obviously the American fans are desperate to know if you come into Coda, and I'm sure you're 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 interested too. Can you give us any uh, inside paddock um, insight or or not? Man, I'm almost as clueless as everyone else, but I have heard you always hear rumors are out throughout the paddock and. 
someone told me a couple of days ago that they said that Coda was going to be the last race of the year. So I have no idea. Don't I? I have no idea. That's not like a... a <laughs> well, it's interesting. Thing. It's on the calendar as the last race of the year, and it just says PPD, which means postponed. But, uh, yeah, yeah uh, that's interesting. Uh, Argentina and um, Cota were put just automatically because, of course, they were supposed to be in April, their traditional places. Um, but I'll, I'll take it. If it's the last race of the year, we'll have it. And I think there'll be a oh, huge Hell crowd. yeah, man. For me, if, if it's the last race of the year, that would be incredible finish off the, a season, hopefully a, a killer season at a, my home track. That would be an insane. It'd be so cool. I hope that happens. Well, Joe, finally, just uh, I want to fly the, the Roberts flag. Um, tell the fans where to find you socially and, um, you know, when to tune in. Obviously, it's next weekend, right, uh, Jerez? Yeah. Um, well, you can follow me on the MotoGP website. Uh, personally, you can follow me with my, uh, my Instagram, Joe Roberts racer really get down to the specifics there of what i do uh <laughs> um i'm not like ter- i'm not amazing at keeping updates well, you, but you I don't do want to follow joe joe roberts the electrician then do you i mean that i mean no, that's no, why no. you've got to be specific yeah i gotta be specific you don't want it like yeah joe roberts the plumber or something you right joe roberts racer so. Got it. <laughs> so we'll look for you there and uh, great stuff so far uh keep taking it to remy gardner Pick up as much rubber on your leathers as possible uh, and throw a bit back next time. Yeah, definitely be throwing some back after that. (laughs) Well, listen, Joe, great to talk to you. We'll catch up again in maybe a couple of races or hopefully uh, even sooner if we get that elusive win. All right, man. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Likewise. Best of luck, Joe. And all the United States fans are behind you and Cameron Bobier. Best of luck to both of you. Cheers, man.